Let's visit the 90s all over again. Put on those hammer pants. This is Dope Nostalgia. Episode 140, This is Dope Nostalgia, and I'm your host, Naomi. We have a special guest today who has been a featured rapper and performer in the Euro dance group Snap. That is where I first learned of Jesse Kolb. He talks about what's been inspiring him and his music, what his motivations are, and so much more. I'm going to give you a little bit of tiny bit of a background on Snap real quick before we get talking to Jesse about his music. Wikipedia Moments. Snap is a German Euro dance group formed in 1989 by producers Michael Munzig and Luca Anzalotti. The act has been through a number of lineup changes over the years, including American singers, songwriters, and rappers Thea Austin, Turbo B, Nikki Harris, and Penny Ford. Biggest hits are The Power and Rhythm is a Dancer, both of which took the number one spot in multiple countries. Jesse had the opportunity to be a member of this group in the last few years. So he's here today, Jesse Kolb. Welcome to the show. What's up? Hey, Jesse. Awesome. You got it going. Hey, how you feeling? How you feeling? Excited. It's three. No, it's 1.30 a.m. here. 1.30. Then good morning, everybody out there. Good Isn't morning. That great? It's wonderful. Well, welcome to Canada, Jesse. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to do dope nostalgia shows with me today. So hey, your character exciting. is amazing. Your character is amazing. I've watched you and you have fun doing what you're doing. So it's yeah, it's it's blasphemy. It's blasphemy if someone doesn't take the time. Oh, thank you. Jesse, a.k.a. JL, right? Uh, no more. It is no now more JL? Jesse, no more JL. It's just Jesse Cole, man. Um, I come to the conclusion I've done so much in the name of Jesse Cole that it's my name plus it's a brand. And I am Jesse Cole, just like I am Iron Man. You know what I mean? I yeah. am Jesse Cole. So, so no more JL, man. JL is... Um, was a person who who just, he, he just didn't understand. He understood the hustle, but he didn't understand the life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Jesse, every time someone says that name, Jesse, I always have a smirk because it makes me feel good. Like, wow, you say my name and I like it. It's a good name, you know? Yeah, and, it uh, is a good name. It is a good name. And since I'm, you know, I'm a, an American, but I have a German name, mm -hmm. why would I want to, destroy that that's beautiful yeah you know i mean mm -hmm. so it's jesse cove now baby yeah i understand you were raised in both the u.s and germany so currently yeah. you're in germany how long have you been there now i've been there nine and a half years for Sweet. in four months it'll be 10 years i want to know so much about germany it must be a beautiful country it, it is beautiful it is it's it's gorgeous i think um I think I see the beauty more than the people that's actually always been here. You know what I mean? Mm. They have natural vegetation. They have good weather. It's cold when it's supposed to be cold, hot when it's supposed to be hot. Um, Proper I live in seasons. A, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, I live, I live in, a, in a city with the largest mountain in all of, all of Europe. You know what I mean? Really? So we go to... Yeah, we go to the top sometimes and look down over the city. I think it's beautiful. What are some of your favorite things about uh, the German culture? And where would you recommend people to come visit when they came to visit you there in Germany? Well, first, I would recommend them to come to Good Kreuznach. Yeah. <laughs> My city. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend them to go to Good Kreuznach. I would definitely tell them to stay away from the tourist places mm -hmm. because uh, tourists uh, uh, attract um, scum. You know what I mean, not trying to be rude or anything, but everybody's trying to make a dollar from somebody. Mm -hmm. I think they should go somewhere where it's beautiful and peaceful. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think if you like history, I think Ramstein will be a good place for you. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah, uh -huh. I think Ramstein, not just because of the group, mm -hmm. but you would actually see the military base as well, the Air Force base, you know? So 
I think Ramstein is a good place. Good quite stuff in Ramstein. Beautiful. A huge amount of history. Yeah. What made you decide in the beginning um, that you wanted to be a musician? How old were you? What was going on in your life? I was, uh, I didn't even know I was being a musician. Uh, I was listening to Michael Jackson, watching his videos and stuff. And I found it interesting. Mm-hmm. And then sooner or later, like with seven and eight, I started writing my own songs, but I didn't know that was a talent. I just did it. It was fun. Mm-hmm. And then when I got older, I think with 13, I did my first song. You know, I got on stage and 3000 people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I like this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I like this. Um, and, I, and I think that's the difference between JL and Jesse because JL wanted the fame of the success. But mm-hmm. Jesse just loves doing what he does. And mm-hmm. there's more power in loving to do what you do because it never feels like work. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. 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 And obviously, MJ being an influence on you, who were your other musical heroes growing up? I mean, you, you, you're, talking about, you're talking about the Prince. Songwriter. Amazing. Uh, you're talking about when you're talking about, and, and this is going to be sound funny, you're talking about Backstreet Boys. Why? Because I don't care how much people talk about boy groups. Backstreet Boys had some hits and they had a whole entire uh, thing going on. Uh, sorry for the Ponzi scheme. I'm sorry for the negative stuff. But mm-hmm. you guys really held it down for the 90s for real. Then amen. you have, uh, amen, right? Mm-hmm. Then, um, uh, le- let me see. Let me see. You you have Jay Z definitely because mm-hmm. at the end of the day he brought the hustle to the game. You know what I mean? He brought that hustle, that smooth hustle, not that that grummy, that grimy hustle, but that smooth hustle. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I'm Jay Z and you gonna feel it. I'm making money here and you gonna feel it and you gonna see it. You know what I'm saying? Big pan pan, spending cheese. You yeah. know? And then um, let me see who who else really. Let, let, me, let me explain to you why I like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, uh, he had different processes in his life. Mm. First and foremost, never say that he fell off. You can never say he fell off. Because what he touched in the 70s, he touched in the 80s. What he touched in the 80s, he touched in the 90s. What he touched in the 90s, he touched in the 2000s. Don't speak of Michael Jackson as he fell off. That's not, it's not possible. And it's not possible for someone to sit and say, I'm better than Michael Jackson. And I just want to mm-hmm. clarify that because there's some people saying we've overcome Michael Jackson. See, there's a difference. When people listen to the Jackson 5, they listen to Michael Jackson. When they listen to Michael Jackson, they listen to Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson. The difference is some of the fans that the people had back then that say they are better than Michael Jackson or, or past Michael Jackson, they don't listen to him now. Because mm-hmm. they, they just don't, they don't touch them like they did back then. This mm. humbleness, this humility is what Michael Jackson had. And that's what people are missing. Forget the talent. Michael Jackson had humility. Michael Jackson had humbleness. And that's what a lot of artists are missing. And that's how I feel like I'm becoming. I feel like I'm, I'm the person, but at the same time, a artist. Not the artist, a artist. You understand? Yeah. And so, you know. I know I'm talking a lot, but words have power. So you you have to definitely articulate yourself correctly, you know? And I want you to. <laughs> That's definitely. good. Definitely. I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan too. And it's funny because of his massive success throughout the 70s and 80s, I didn't really listen to him until the 90s. Because I mean, <laughs> home, I wasn't really allowed to listen to what was on the radio, Christian music I was listening to and all that. But yeah. just just like the album Dangerous came out and just kind of changed so much for me. Absolutely love that album. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, if you look back at Michael Jackson's videos, that persona of everyone calling him childlike, man, that was the very thing that you loved about him because he brought videos to life that other people will be ashamed to do. Smooth criminal. Let me do smooth criminal. I will get in the persona of Michael Jackson of uh, I will get in the persona of Peter Pan. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, a childlike persona because he brought that over so well. It wasn't about the dance moves. It wasn't just about the song. It was about how he brought it over. He felt it, you know? And then when you're talking about uh, who's bad, he really brought a different uh, uh, feel to the whole entire game. And then when you're talking about uh, Thriller, come on. 
first and foremost, that was supposed to be called Starlight Night, I think. And then oh. uh, uh, Quincy Jones changed it to Twi- uh, Thriller Night. And to me, the way he brought it over, it's like he brought video, he brought movies, he brought uh, a, a reason for you to watch his video. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. And uh, and that's what music is missing nowadays. And I think I can bring that. It just I'm just missing support. But that's okay. I support myself. And as long as I believe in myself, I think I can get there. You absolutely can. Because as long as you know what you're doing well and you excel at it, you just got to keep putting it out there and people will understand and love. So now that we talked about the musical heroes in the early part of your career, and then at what point, how did you become a part of Snap? Well, what happened is um, there was a... Uh, a group of people that thought it was funny to use me. See, it's mm. once you know, you can't unknow. And that's good. You know, if someone uses you and you don't know, you just, mm. you, 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 ignorance is bliss. So they wanted to see if they can get a club connected to a radio station in America. So they hired me to do a free show. Oh. All right. But the funniest thing is um, there was a guy there that got cool with me. So we talked, we became friends. And the next week, they went and did the show there. I said, hey, invite me again. They said, we don't need you. We just used you to see if, if we can do, because we didn't want to do it and embarrass ourselves. We don't need you. The funny thing is that guy who I met there that night uh, knew uh, the, singer, uh, the singer from Snap. And uh, she was looking for a rapper. He said, hey, I got a guy. I got a guy. And he called me up two weeks later. And I became the rapper Snap for seven long years, man. Seven long years, man. And I rocked the stage like no one's ever rocked it before. I'm sorry. Hey, original, I, I, I salute you because you brought that flow. But man, I brought that flow and that power. I'm talking mm-hmm. about I came out because I felt it. You understand? And yeah. it wasn't about jealousy. I brought it how the people, you paid to see me. I'm going to give you what you paid for and more. Yeah. You understand? You understand? And, and I'm even bringing it now. Like, the, when it comes to power, when it comes to artillery on stage, no one's touching me because I will make the same show for two people that I would do for 2,000, 20,000, 100,000. And I've proved it. You have it. to. I have, you have to. to. Have to. It doesn't matter how many people are there. You have to entertain every face in the crowd. Damn right. It ain't about me. It isn't about me. It's about us. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And everybody, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When people say you fell off, there's no such thing as falling off. I, I, want, I want to give you an example. Then I want to go back to un- why I say that. Okay. If someone tells you you're going to fail in two days and you fell in two days, did you fail in two days or did you open yourself up to fail in two days because someone told you? Mm-hmm. You opened you yourself up for- You opened yourself up for failure because if no one told you you're going to fail in two days, you would have never noticed you failed. You would have been like, at least I went for it. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, so when people sit and say, you fell off, how did I fall off? I was the rapper of Snaps for seven years. I went to The Voice of Germany, but they invited me. I Mm -hmm. didn't ask to be there. I told them, no, they called me back. Come on, please. You know what I'm saying? I went on every TV show and I rocked it and I remained humble. You understand? And mm-hmm. and and the whole thing is, before you say someone fell off, you need to try to actually do what they did before you say they fell off. If you haven't done what they did, like you, you you're a radio host, you're a TV host, you're uh, your host of mm-hmm. what you do. I haven't yeah. done that. So if your views go down, I can't say, oh, she fell off. I ain't done that before. I don't know. Uh, Mm -hmm. what goes on behind those scenes you Mm -hmm. understand so therefore the whole entire thing is I can never listen to someone say you fell off because I'm still going I'm still Mm -hmm. maneuvering you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and every process has its path right so 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 everything's not necessarily always going to be going uphill okay all the way right like I like that I like that but let me explain to you something May I? Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you this. If someone told you you were going to be a king or a queen sometime in your life, 
And the only thing you hold on to is that they said you're going to be a king and a queen. You're living wrong. Let me tell you why. You're not just living. This is why the logo exists, okay? Hmm. Because one thing you have to realize, once you become that king and queen, what's next? You've spent 10 years, 20 years, 30 years believing what someone told you, but you haven't lived. Yeah. You haven't lived. So therefore, you don't understand process. Process is when something occurs, but it doesn't last forever. Mm -hmm. Marriage doesn't last forever, but you can work on it. You understand? Success in work, success in music doesn't last forever, but you can work on it. Mm -hmm. If you learn to just live, if you learn to just live, all that other shit don't bother you, okay? I was the rapper, snap, cool, those days are done. I was on The Voice of Germany and I rocked that shit and still they use my my face for promotion. Okay, that shit is done. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Now I'm the... The, the boss, basically, the, the the guy from a new TV station. Yeah, it's not major yet, but I'm working on it. I got the camera right here. Look at that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, man. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are. Don't look after the promise of what someone told you. Mm-hmm. Just try to live and enjoy life because, because you're going to end up sitting one day and thinking about the future, which is not promised, or you're going to think about the past. That is unclear. Mm-hmm. So how about you just focus on now and see what you can do now? Thousand percent. And Thousand. follow follow what your path is, not what exactly. I don't like letting other people get in my head. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sums. We do they pass guns, we do they kill sons. It's I rule the world. Imagine that, how many balls to that? According to the voice, rappers now the voice. House for Sprung and Deutsch, Illuminati, them boys like some Orion toys. You not grinding, you just on another assignment. Looking for the truth, but you'll never find them. But you may find a black man with Nike behind him. Yeah, just do it, do it. Black proud, successful, and prove it. We blocked your hits like the new kid. Shim Shim Sharu from the roof tip. Black proud, successful, and prove it. We blocked your hits like a new kid. Please! Wake me up, it's a hell of a nightmare. Too many trees for people to see the woods here. Yeah. They still trying to talk us all in that if we work together, we'll win. Look, wake me up, it's a hell of a nightmare. Too many After these messages, we'll be right back. Dope Nostalgia listeners, I love you and I thank you so much for being a part of this show and its success over the last two years. We have what's called Patreon for those who want to support the show financially. For as little as $1 a month, you can become a subscriber and get bonus content, early podcast release, all kinds of cool behind the scenes stuff, and more. There's different tiers of membership starting at only $1 a month. And we even have some special merch for you guys who are in it for the long run. So please join our Patreon. It's at www.patreon.com forward slash dope nostalgia. Who creates the content we love? I was a very emotional child. But I was really shy growing up. What makes them passionate? I want to draw Saturday morning cartoons. I could actually write some of this. Part of me comes out in a design that I do. And why do they persist? You know, I was in a bad mental spot. It was a big sacrifice. The hard-earned lesson is you have to do your own thing. And this has been like a rebirth for me. Hear their stories on your favorite podcast player. Creators After Dark. Mr. Cow. Yes? How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I don't know. I always end up biting. Ask Mr. Fox, for he's much cleverer than I. Mr. Fox, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Why don't you ask Mr. Turtle, for he's been around a lot longer than I. Me? (laughs) I bite. Mr. Turtle. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Why, you never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl, for he is the wisest of us all. Mr. Owl, 
How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? A good question. Let's find out. One, two, three, three. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a smart album. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. What year was it when you uh, joined SNAP? When was that? Uh, 2012. And what kind of opportunities did you get t- during that time? What What's one of your most memorable performances or uh, traveling? I'm going to tell you which one was. There was a time where the singer didn't show up. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me tell you something. We was at the biggest stadium in Germany. All right. The singer didn't show up. She wasn't supposed to go somewhere, but she went because, you know, she's a good hearted person. So she went and did the show. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. People are good. But no one thought it was Ramadan, so therefore they couldn't fly back. You mm-hmm. understand? It happens. So I'm there, daytime till nighttime. There's a beatboxer there, okay? And there's 100,000 people. 100,000 people. The singer isn't there. I'm the only one there. And all of a sudden, I see this, uh, this house band. And I watched them sing. And I was like, hey, uh, I have a question because I'm a master of making shit work. I don't see problems, I see solutions. When I have a problem, I smile. I'm like, yes, yes, they need me because I need to, I need to, I need to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, do you know the hook to rhythm is a dancing? So we practiced it for 15 minutes. I said, check this out. When I grab your shoulder, you'll sing rhythm is a dancer, okay? I went to the beatboxer. I said, hey, can you beatbox rhythm is a dancer? He said, let me practice. We practice for 15 minutes. That's 30 minutes. Nighttime. Last performance. All right. I go up on stage. He starts beatboxing. Uh, she starts singing. Uh, I start rapping. Uh, cameras go up. Uh, she starts singing. Uh, I start rapping. Uh, I give him a solo. Uh, I crowd serve. A uh, hundred thousand people now, right? Wow. The original singer comes as everybody walks away. I'm the last show. Everybody walks away. Mm-hmm. All right. The boss said, we're not going to show this performance to the world. And they removed all the videos that ever existed of this moment. Mm-hmm. They erased it because they were like, we're not going to give this man no credit. That's what he said, the owner of that place. You did a great job, but we're not going to give you no credit. And so it never existed, except for those 100,000 people that were there. Really? I'm talking about it was nuts. I'm talking about they were waving their hands like, ah, picture 100,000 people, ah, then crowd surfing. Ah. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I brought that then and now. I brought that then and now. And you can't take that from me. That's why it's rememberable because it's up here. It's not on social media. You can't find it. It's here. Yeah. So going from that into the next seven years, mm-hmm. how did that take place for you? How, like, where did you get to go? travel all over the world all over the world i've seen every place in the world i've seen the good i've seen bad i've seen them when they were having war Mm -hmm. i I mean i'm talking about in egypt i passed through a a city with nothing but bullet holes got to the uh, destination turned on the tv and at nighttime they threw cocktails and started shooting up the streets i'm talking about it was that serious then when i came back uh, we went to the airport and on the way of going in, a shorty pulled her uh, stuff open and started screaming. Hala, la, 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 la. And then she had bombs on her and they had to carry carry her out like that. Everyone dropped. People covered their children. Uh, um, oh, wow. um, the, the tanks were outside. Tanks. I'm talking about army tanks. You did what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. when 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 people say this is a simple job, it's not easy. You can lose your life. Mm-hmm. You can lose your life. Uh, de- de- dealing with the circumstances. Look at the circumstances now. We don't have money. We don't have jobs. We don't have. We have Corona. We have war. We, you, somebody may flip out and have a bad day and just blow up the place and boom. And yeah. all you wanted to do was make them laugh. You did what I'm saying. Yep. Shit, man. It's true. I'm sorry, man. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, man. No, but it is. It's a fucked up world. So you got to live every, every bit to the moment, every every day, because. Everything can be fucked up. Just live. live. Just live, man. That is the that's the rule, though, in life. Like 
you're going to be a child and you're going to be old, but what are you going to do in the middle? Mm-hmm. Either you fu- you're going to worry about the fucked up people, fucked up things, or you're going to just live. You understand? Mm-hmm. And that's why my city's called Good Quite Snuff, because I took the bad out and put the good in. I'm tired of being recognized as a city as, uh, as uh, drug infested like Berlin. Man, we have 154,000 people here. Berlin has 4 million plus. Mm-hmm. Why in the world can't I get successful for my music? Why I got to get successful for the drugs? You know what I mean? Ooh, so I got sick and yeah. tired of the people. Uh, people here, they wrong, man. They like bad people, man. There's the people in power. They just bad here. But you know what? I'm not even going to mention no names. They told me the shit they do the, from racism to hating me to, to lying on my name. But they're not going to do it openly. You know what mm. I mean? Because at the end of the day, they want me to flip out so they can get a little bit of promotion. I'm not going to do that, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my mindset and turn this bitch into good quite now. And you ain't got shit to say. Because at the end of the day, I'm the king of good quite now. I am the artist of good quite now. Why? Because there's nobody else doing it like me. You dig what I'm saying? So yeah. at the end of the day, I've won again. Try to stop me with your racism. I don't care. That's your problem. Try to stop me with your saintiness ass. I don't care. That's your problem. As long mm. as for me, I'm just living and I'm turning Good Quite Snuff into something good. That's why if you got Facebook, go to Good Quite Snuff. Go to G-O-O-D, G-O-O-D, Quite Snuff. Then we also got a merch store. Go to Good Quite Snuff Merch. So therefore, go and click on both of them. Good Quite Snuff, the, 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 the group where every, this is not just for the city, it's the world. Good means good. It's fair. Kreuznach means uh, follow the cross. That's what it means, okay? It means follow the cross. So so my city already said it. Why would I say bad, follow the cross? No, good. I mean, bad Kreuznach. It's, it, it's good Kreuznach. It's something good to follow the cross. So therefore, go to the merch. You'll see we took the bad out and put the good in. If you want to join the group and you want to do some promotion for your stuff or you just want to see what's popping or you just want to introduce yourself, stop by the Facebook group and say, what's up? You know what I mean? Head. It's like one, two, three. I have no... Look, I'm blessed to be colored. You want to know what my superpowers is? Can I tell you my superpowers? Of course. Yes. You want my superpower? And this... Uh, I, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to cut this short then because I have another meeting okay. at 10 o'clock. All right? So check this out. You want to know what my superpower is? I can stand anywhere in Europe and I can ask anybody, white, colored, light, dark, accent non-accent i can ask anybody hey man how long you been here Mm -hmm. or where you come from not once would they ever say why you want to know why because i'm brown i have an accent myself so Mm -hmm. at the end we can go into conversation they already know i'm not racist hey man where you come from oh man i come from uh, italy how long you been here man seven years (laughs) you understand instead of where you come from why why yeah. I just have to hold the fact I just asked why, why, why are you asking? Instead of that defense, I'm. You don't have to have a defense against me. You dig know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say, where you come from? I come from Italy. Where you come from? Canada. I come from Canada, man. <laughs> wow, I I think that's very positive too, and I think that's good because that means you can open up yourself to some of the best conversations with new people all the time. Definitely. You know? uh, hey, I have a question. Sure. You now. Hey, look, it doesn't matter. I think I sent you to Wikipedia. I think you can even type in Jesse Cove and a Wikipedia bio will come up. I can even send it to you, right? Okay. And it yeah. and it and here's the problem I have. I want to make sure this, I want to say this to somebody and you're the opportunity to say this because you're not from here. I believe the people that aren't letting me do Wikipedia are a little strange, all right? Yeah. The reason why I say this is because I'm trying to get recognized like a blue check, all right? Mm-hmm. Trying to get recognized because the thing is, once you're recognized in life, like if, a, I'll give you the example. If a father says, that's my son, people are going to say, I don't want no stress with the father, so I'm not going to do with the son. I'm not going to stress with the son. Mm-hmm. If they say, if the father says, that's not my son, people are going to say, he's just a bastard with him. We can use him. We can play him. We can do whatever we want. And we ain't got no stress with the father. So the more the story is, I've done Snap. I've done The Voice. Mm-hmm. I've done, 
I've done everything known to mankind. I have got viral songs. I got viral hits. I got songs that's in well in the two millions for other companies. And mm-hmm. yet they still won't give me a blue check. They say, no one cares. You're not a star enough. Mm-hmm. You're not doing enough. And I'm like, I've done enough. I've had 180 shows a year. I've yeah. done your TV show because you asked me. I've done other TV shows because they booked me for shows. I have done promotion for companies under my name. And yet I still can't get recognized in the blue check. And it's very important to do so because once you're recognized as that, people are going to start recognizing you as that. And as long as everybody looks at you as like, you ain't nobody, all my works will always be in vain. So- That's very sad that it has to be that way just from a fucking check mark on a social media page. Exactly, but it is, but it is like that. Yeah. You know what? I'm not even chasing fame, but the fact is I am chasing respect and notoriety. You understand? Understood. My my works will not be in vain. You got me fucked up. If you think I'm going to do all this shit for free sometimes even, some of the superstars that wanted me to write their songs and I've been on their songs haven't even paid me. They ain't even paid the studio time. You wow. dig what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. they made viral songs, but they got on with other stars because of my shit. But anyway, that's another story. We'll definitely talk about that. But the more the story is, if you could ask your, your fans, your followers, uh, to follow me on, on Instagram, to follow me on YouTube, to follow me on that Good Quite Snap page, so the numbers could raise up. So they don't have, so as long as I have numbers, they can't say nothing else. Because if yeah. they have another excuse, then that's they proud. I have so, absolutely um, no problem doing that for you. I'm going to make sure that that's part of what we do when we plug this episode is first of all, tag you in all that social media and uh, get people to follow you and see what you're doing. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. And I will do the same for you whenever Thank I you. have the numbers. When I have numbers, I'll do the same for you. Thank you. I know that you have to run to another meeting. So I definitely wanted to ask you about when you, especially when you showed me the camera, what your mm-hmm. current projects are that we can look forward to. Well, here's the thing I decided to, because they have a TV channel, but no one is using this act. They have an actual fucking TV channel, something you can see on TV, but no one uses that because they do everything for free and, and free equals nothing. <laughs> It's just a lackluster of energy. You understand? A lackluster because some people use you. So the whole entire thing, I said, hey, I'm great behind the camera. I'm great as a host. I'm, I'm funny. I'm witty, but I'm also smart. So I started going to events, recording the events and doing the interviews by myself. Now I'm getting somebody to cut my videos. But mm. therefore, they will start playing the interviews and, 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 and the report on their TV channel, on their Facebook on their Instagram, on their YouTube, and therefore numbers start building. People will start saying, hey, this shit really exists. I believe we can be bigger than a a, a major uh, German TV station here. People will start giving us money for promotion, for for, uh, uh, commercials and all that. And guess what? All you have to do is pay because I'm doing the work for you. But I will never make you pay because I'm arrogant. I will never, I'm old enough to know I'm not going to stop being grounded. Don't play Mm. me. I don't play you. And let's make history. That's it. Yeah. As it should be. As it should be. Everybody wins. You know what? I like your show. Um, Thank you. I I think once I get this rolling, I think this this project right here is going to work. And it's going to make people interested. So once it starts rolling, I would like to have your show on that channel. I'll figure out how to do that. I, I would think be, it'll be, I'd be honored if we could have a talk about that when it's time. I'd be so yeah. excited. Give me two months. Thank you, Jesse. Give me two months. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from this Patreon, from here on, on, we going to keep rocking. Ain't nobody stopping. I am <laughs> hip hop, so I'm hip hopping. Uh, guess what? Back day. Back in the day, you said I fell off, now I'm popping. <laughs> Check for the new song that's dropping. Anyway, I'm out, man. I love you. Peace. Love you too, Jesse. <laughs> Take, Take care, care. All right? Peace. Bye. What up, everybody? This is feel good music right here. Put a glass in the sky, don't die. <laughs> Live a little. Dance on the beat, boy. <laughs>
Your dude came from nothing, now I made something. Stacked a little paper, now your man's business running. Shorty came from nothing, now she made something. Stacked a little paper, now she old man nothing. Your dude came from nothing, now I made something. Stacked a little paper, now your man's business running. Shorty came from nothing, now she made something. Stacked a little paper, now she owe a man nothing. Light one, kick it, don't even think about it. Holla myself now, I even put a ring around it. No limit, soldier, god damn it, I'm so bad it. Take a moment off work and drop it like a low rider. These women are queens, they raise our future, the future's unseen. But I have seen what I can be, so to all my fellas, lift the glass and forget the past. Enjoy your night, enjoy your shorty smack on the ass. Reminder why she she got it bad in the first place Freak her mind some Have her thinking past third base A drink on me, the night is free The night is young Five, two, six, three, three, two, one Your dude came from nothing Now I made something Stacked a little paper Now your man's business running Shorty came from nothing Now she made something Stacked a little paper Now she old man nothing Your dude came from nothing Now I made something Stacked a little paper now your man's business running Shorty came from nothing Now she made something Stacked a little paper Now she owe a man nothing Hey kids, put down that Tamagotchi and listen for a second You know, you can follow us on Twitter at Nostalgia Dope Instagram at Dope underscore Nostalgia Visit our website at www.dopenostalgia.com Or pick up the phone and call us at 780-851-8785 this podcast is licensed by SoCan because we believe that artists should be paid for their work.